It is with great joy that I come to you today and share with you some words of encouragement that will help you along the way as you live your life for the Lord. It is such a great privilege that God has given to us to be able to study His Word and understand His Word and share His Word with others. God has been so good to us. He has blessed us with so many hours in every day, so many days in every week, so many weeks in every month, so many months in every year. He has blessed us with this time. And I believe that we should take some of this time and give back to the Lord. So this is what I do, just share with you daily, trusting that God would use His Word, use His Word, that He would speak through me who is speaking, but you would hear from Him. I would just be relaying a message that came from Him. That's all I'm trying to do. I'm trying my best to make sure that if I tell you something, I go back to the description and tell you this is the reason why I am telling you what I'm telling you. I'm speaking to you on how to become a winner in life, and I'm going back to the scripture and looking for the formula, what God requires of us in order to be winners. The songwriter, Stand Up For Jesus, George Duffield, he said, Stand up for Jesus. Stand in His strength alone. The arm of flesh will fail you. You dare not trust your own. Put on the gospel armor, each piece built on with prayer, where duty calls our danger. Be never wanting there. Our text, 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse number 13 and 14. Watch ye, stand fast in the faith. Quit you like men, be strong. Let all your things be done with charity. We are looking at to be a winner in life, you must be on your guard. You must be on the lookout. Many times we hire security guards and we have them to be on the lookout to recognize what's going on. And when they see something going on that's wrong, they try to put a stop to it, make an alert, let people know that this is not right. You cannot do that. So we are looking at it. And in looking at it, we notice that there are three enemies that we need to look out for. And one of those enemies is an enemy that is without, and that is the world. We looked at that. And then the other enemy is within. This is the flesh. This enemy, I said many times and too many times, get the victory over the believer. Why? Because many believers don't see the flesh as an enemy. Oh, we pamper this flesh. We try to give this flesh what this flesh wants. This flesh sometimes make us look good. And this flesh sometimes make us look bad. And even though we think we are looking good, it's the flesh that cause our attitudes to be the way that they are. And if you give in to the flesh, it will always lead us wrong. Even though it may look good or sound good, the flesh will always lead us wrong. The flesh is evil and corrupt, and it is incapable of improving. I close when I shared with you from Romans chapter 7 and verse number 18, where it was the Apostle Paul himself who said, For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For the will is present with me. But how to perform that which is good? I find it not. What is good? I find it hard to do. Now, may I remind you that we fall prey to the old nature and many immediately notice it. When the flesh is taking over the believer, when the flesh is in control of the believer, the believer will be operating based on the flesh, saying things, doing things based on the flesh. And other believers notice it, and not only other believers. You'd be surprised to know that non-believers notice it. I've said before, and I believe that I can say it again, that it appears as if the non-believer knows more how the believer supposed to walk, supposed to live, than the believer him or herself. So when we are out of the way, when we are not walking right, the non-believer could say, look at him. He say he's a Christian and look how he's behaving. Listen to what he's saying. Look where he is. Christians don't really do that. So this flesh, we fall prey to the old nature 
and immediately many people notice it. It is the flesh, don't trust it. Bear in mind, it is the flesh, it lusteth against the spirit. The flesh wants to walk contrary to the spirit. Hear what Paul told the Romans as we continue in Romans chapter 7. And I'm going to read for you from verse 19 to 25. Here's what Paul is saying. For the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. Now, if I do that I would not, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. I find in a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. But I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this debt? Verse 25, I thank God through Jesus Christ, O Lord. So then with the mind, I myself saw the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. Now watch this man. This man wrote so many books in the New Testament, but he's telling you when it comes to the flesh, hey, there are times still that the flesh or the old nature wants to take him in the opposite direction. He said in his mind he wanted to serve God, but sometimes the flesh caused him to go contrary. None of us are perfect, and he's not claiming perfection. He's not saying that he's perfect. He's saying, hey, don't trust the flesh for the thing that you don't want to do you find yourself doing and the thing that you want to do you don't find yourself doing he said oh wretched man that i am who shall deliver me from all of this that i am going through who shall deliver me from the body of this debt he said i thank god through jesus christ my lord day by day you and i are called upon to crucify the flesh if we are going to be winners if you're going to win you must stand guard against the enemy. You must stand guard and make sure that you understand who are your enemies, where your enemies operate from. There are those that are without, that's the world. Then there's an enemy within, and that's the one that you got to really keep your eyes on, and that's the flesh. But there is an enemy around. Now, this one, we often talk about a lot. Now, who is this enemy around? Of course, this is the devil. Believers, Satan is real. He is powerful. He is subtle. His aim is to bring us down, especially if you're doing something for Christ. Believers, you and I are no match for the enemy. Outside of Jesus Christ, Satan would win us every time. Don't you ever try to go to battle against the enemy without being armed with the armor of God. He's going to take you to pieces. He will take us to pieces. But when we have on the armor of God, hey, hey, he will never win. When we follow the advice of our commander, when we put ourselves where he say we should be, and when we fight the way he say we should fight, will always be victorious. Satan is real. So Peter writes to the believers in 1 Peter chapter 5, he said, be sober-minded, be vigilant, be always looking out. Why? Because your adversary, the devil. Oh, the devil is not your friend. The devil is not my friend. The devil is our enemy. The adversary, the devil, watch this, as a roaring lion. He is as a roaring lion. I don't know if you ever had any closeness with a lion. I went over to Africa, and when I went over to Africa, one day we went to the zoo, and we drove up in a pickup truck, and we drove up by a den with lions. And the guy said, you could come out. They said, come out, you gotta be crazy. And from the time we drove up, man, the maid on the back of those lions stood up and they roared. And in my mind, I could feel my bones crush by that lion. The Bible says he is as a roaring lion. Even the roar gets you concerned. And what he is doing, not only is as a roaring lion, walk it about. He's not standing still. 
he walketh above for what reason, seeking whom he may devour. Oh, that's what Satan came for, to kill, steal, and destroy. Seeking whom he may devour, and many people play with the lion. The guys told me in Africa, it's okay. You can get close to the cage. I say, I don't play with lions. And many people play with Satan as a roaring lion. There are many people who are living a good life, played with Satan, and he destroyed them. He destroyed them. There are those who even come to mind now. And you know what? He will do the same thing to me. He will do the same thing to you if you and I are not vigilant. He has many schemes and devices. We all must be aware of his attacks. In 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 11, he says, Lest Satan get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Know what they are. Stay away from the enemy. A, stay close to God. Stand guard, and you will be victorious. Our Father, thank you so much. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for this formula that you have given to us. And may we use it, dear God, uh, to honor you, to glorify you. And may we use it to be winners, dear Father. Thank you for your people. Bless them wherever they are. Thank you for your people who share. Thank you for your people who, after listening, God will turn to you and pray and ask you to help them to be victorious. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for showing us, oh, where we are slipping and the willingness to make it right. Have your way with us now. We love you, praise you, and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Brethren, I cannot say how much I appreciate you sharing these devotions. Thank you so much.